Okay, so it became obvious to me when I was watching some of Canelo's older fights and I was looking at his box rack as well. But Canelo Alvarez, he really doesn't knock out men that are larger than him. When Canelo fought Caleb Smith, he hurt Caleb Smith. Caleb Smith was six foot four. Caleb Smith is a guy that's fighting at light heavyweight now. Canelo was unable to knock out Caleb Smith because of Caleb Smith's size. Canelo was unable to knock out Dimitri Bivol because of his size. The Kovalev fight, that shit was rigged. That was fake. Canelo was unable to knock out uh, Daniel Jacobs because of hey, What's up, Stevens World? When you look at Canelo and his opposition, if a man is naturally larger than him, he's probably not going to get the knockout. That's what history says. If someone is that much taller and that much larger than him, nine times out of ten, he's not going to get a knockout. He's going to have to outbox them. But that's talking about the Canelo of old. Let's fast forward and look at the Canelo nowadays. Canelo fought John Ryder, a man who could be fighting at 160 by his own admission, but John Ryder doesn't like to get in the sauna. He doesn't like to uh, sweat. He doesn't like to really lose that, that weight. So he's an undersized, super middleweight, much like Canelo. They're closer to the same size, but Canelo's a little bit bigger than him. He was unable to stop John Ryder. Jaime Mugia was able to stop John Ryder. Then, fast forward to the fight against Jamel Charlo, a man jumping up two weight divisions. Canelo was unable to stop a smaller fighter. So he has a history of not being able to stop larger men, Caleb Smith, Dimitri Bivol, Daniel Jacobs. And recently, he's shown that his power and timing is not the same. He's unable to stop smaller men like John Ryder and Jamel Charlo. The reason why to me is I think Canelo is slowing down. When I watched the fight against John Ryder and Jamel, I didn't see the head movement. I didn't see the defense. I didn't really see Canelo trying to box. I saw him just trying to walk guys down. Benavidez is way too big for Canelo to try to walk him down. He tried to walk Bivol down. And we saw how that went. So when you factor in these different things, Oh, your own. Yo, what's up, Kawaki? KJ, KJ, um, what you just said before I got on here, you said like Canelo not doing none of the head movement, the counter punch and ability he used to do. So he just walking people down. That's why a lot of people think like, oh, that's why, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people think Bud can just move up to 168 and do what he do. That's why I ain't saying he would, but I'm saying that's why people think that because Canelo what? don't fight. Canelo don't fight his old style with the head movement. He just yeah. walk people down. You can't walk Bud down because Spence Canelo tried to do Canelo is, um, is not the fighter that he once was. And yeah. I agree hundred percent with you. Like Canelo's head movement isn't the same. So Terrence Crawford, if he were to fight Canelo right now, it would, he'd actually have a pretty decent chance of winning. That would be a 60, 40 fight. But right. Terrence Crawford, he knows how to target certain spots and knock guys out and shit like that. He could potentially hurt Canelo if he went up to, you know, super middleweight. Yeah. But I think Canelo would still be too big. But I know exactly what you mean. Canelo is not even boxing at this point. He yeah. I don't know why, I don't know why he doing all that. I think it's because he's, because as you get older, the stamina, like to box, I'll give an example, Mike Tyson. In order to use the peekaboo style that Mike Tyson was using with all the dipping and the feint and then timing your jab, especially against larger men, it requires a lot of stamina, a lot of energy. So Canelo is getting older and somebody in the chat says, uh, Israel, uh, who says, Nah, I ain't gonna say cause Bud, Bud got Bud better stamina than Canelo and he older than Canelo. Yeah, but Canelo always had stamina issues, but That's if you had stamina issues in your 20s and now you're 33, the stamina issues are going to be exacerbated. They're going to be worse. Fact. So if Canelo is, tries to do the old style of boxing where he was dominant with the head movement, he's going to get tired so fast. He's going to get tired probably within four rounds. He usually gets tired at the four rounds and starts fighting off the ropes, but this will be him getting tired in front of a literal monster. Benavidez, look at this picture. Benavidez is literally a, a monster in the face of Canelo. The man is huge. He's huge for the super middleweight division. So if y'all in here, make sure y'all tap in the screen and like in the live. That's how we push the live. I think Benavidez will overwhelm Canelo with volume punches. Exactly. But ultimately, I, I just wanted to say that Canelo against Caleb Smith, he put pressure on Smith. He outboxed him. But Smith was able to stay around because he was a bigger man than Canelo. The man was six foot four. Daniel Jacobs, larger man than Canelo. And I think they had a rehydration clause in that fight as well. But 
Daniel Jacobs was able to last for 12 rounds. Dimitri Bibble, light heavyweight, was able to last for 12 rounds. You know why? Because they're larger men than Canelo. So Canelo's unable to knock David out. And David Benavidez throws more punches than Canelo. David Benavidez has better stamina than Canelo. David Benavidez fights at a certain pace, at a faster pace than Canelo. How do y'all see Canelo winning this fight? I don't see it. I, in my opinion, if David Benavidez can't get the Canelo fight, he might well just go move up to 175. He's already moved up. He moved up against um he moved up to fight some dude named Ola Zander or something. And oh uh, yeah, yeah, I seen the Ola Zander. Yeah. Yeah. And that that guy is that's supposed to put him in line to get the winner of um Bertha Biev and Bibble. That happened in this summer, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What's good, yeah. I don't think David can beat better be, but I'm pretty sure that he can beat the smaller Bivol though. I think Bivol is just like a step as like David can mess around and just beat Bivol, but I don't think he could do that with better beef. I agree. I in fact I think David could I think Dave, David was giving it to um Bivol in them sparring sessions. I think David really showed Bivol something in the sparring session, but David's style where he takes all that punishment against Bertha Biv, that would be dangerous. So unless David Benavides could add some movement to his style. I don't see him beating Bertha Bia. Bertha Bia. Yeah, yeah. If he if he try to absorb punches from Better Bia, if he going down, because Better Bia, like not, yeah. Better yeah, Bia, not he, he Canelo. Nice. Yeah, but what I'm saying is Better Bia, not Canelo. He's not a snatcher, the smaller guy. He's like a guy who's up there in weight, just like him. So like he's gonna hurt him bad. But David said well, that um he knows Bertha Bia's weakness. So David Benavidez, unlike Canelo, David Benavidez right now in the, is in the mind frame that Canelo was when Canelo was 25 years old. David is not afraid of nobody. He'll take on all comers. Canelo, and when in his 20s, that's how Canelo was. Canelo doesn't have that mindset at this point because he's more thinking about getting out of boxing. He has one foot out of the door. But David Benavidez is ready to fight Bertha Biev, although I think that that's a fight that he will lose unless he uses some more footwork. I don't think he should try to stand. But if he's able to bully Bertha Biev, the sky is the limit for David Benavidez. Like if, it, if his style holds up against Arthur Bertha Biev, where he's just absorbing Bertha Bia's power and he just proves that he's a bigger, stronger man like he's done with all of his other opponents. Uh, I don't see anybody beating David Benavidez unless he beats himself, you know, with the um, drug uses and stuff. Yeah, but David has been always defensively sounded. I mean, what what he did to Boo Boo whenever he was, he, whenever he was landing like them five, six uh, punches combinations, he was still mo moving his head uh, defensively and then still catching himself. His head movement is, is uh, getting really, getting better. In the Caleb plant in the boo, boo fight, you saw him drop and make his frame smaller, duck under punchers and stuff like that. So he's not just, you know, just shelling up all the time. But I don't think that he should try to really do the bully, you know, in basketball, they say bully ball. But I don't think he should try to do bully tactics against Bertha Biev. I think he has to be more of a boxer and a mover. Yeah, he got to be a mover. Box, he has to be like Caleb dangerous. Plant, but with like, um, like... Not like Caleb Plant, but he has to mix a lot of his own style with some movement. He's got yeah. to move more than he's ever moved. In order to beat Bertha Biev, in my opinion, yeah, because Bertha sure Biev strong as hell, bro. Make sure y'all tapping the screen. Thank you. He's just, he, he's the strongest puncher right now. Yeah, Bertha Biev has a hundred percent knockout ratio, and he has belts. Like he's not just knocking out anybody. He's knocking out um, all world class boxers. For example, Caleb Smith and Canelo, they went twelve rounds. Bertha Biev got Caleb up out of there, man. Hey, Dozy, thanks for the rose. If y'all got gifts, send them. Yeah, Bertha Biev is a whole other... Somebody said it was only 19 fights. I understand, but you got to understand... Uh, this man went to the Olympics, too. He beat all... Ex he, 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 he beat he dropped, Usyk. He dropped and, Usyk. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he dropped Usyk in the Olympics whenever he was a teenager. Exactly. He dropped Usyk in the Olympics, and he had um, uh, larger gloves, and he had headgear and all that. He still dropped Usyk with a body shot. Somebody said this fight happening Usyk, now. This fight is not happening... This but them body shots is venomous. Them is body it shots crazy venomous to say Usyk, that this is the biggest duck in boxing history? No. Because not history, but in not today's him. society, yes. You can say today, today. yeah. But, but it's crazy history, in, 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 in my opinion because you get because he offers David Benavidez less money than what Bubu Andre offered David Benavidez, and David Benavidez got around seven million, but David was supposed to get five million. So it was a ninety-two to to eight percent bag and then david accepted it and then canelo said no so this is look this it's a duck but i mean at the end of the day canelo really has proven himself as an all-time great boxer canelo oh, 
Excuse me, but in my opinion, Canelo just doesn't want to get knocked out. That's really what that's really what I think it boils down to. He doesn't want to get knocked out or TKO out. He doesn't want to get embarrassed. He doesn't want to get stopped. People have no idea. Like David Benavidez is something else. He's he's literally a monster. When Mike Tyson said the Mexican monster, hey, that shit was real. Like he really is the Mexican monster. Um, the man is huge for the weight class. Throws a bunch of punches. Has great punch resistance. His defense is only getting better and better. He has all types of experience. He's 14 years old, sparring with Triple G. You know, hey, I mean, what's on? Um, rolled Demetrius Andre. He steamrolled Kayla Plant. Hey, steamrolled him like it, like it was nothing. What What is Berta be of? Like what? Um, where he from? What is he? Uh, Russian. Canadian and, Russian. and a Russian. He is a Russian man. He's the Russian monster, in my opinion. Yeah, he's a Russian monster, but um, Drago Canelo was never in a million years going to get in the ring with Berta Biev, and he has no business fighting Berta Biev. He really should. Oh, what's fought. that one? Dude oh, that yeah, he, he won't Rumble. fight Berta Biev or Benavidez. He won't fight name one of them at all. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna. If if the Benavidez fight doesn't happen by next year, he, he learned that from Bill. Fight Benavidez. In fact, I'm gonna do a video on this, but Canelo. He didn't put Jaime Munguia under a rehydration clause, which is good, but they do have a rematch clause. So why would you even want a rematch clause unless you understand not only is Jaime Munguia dangerous, but if you beat him, you would allow him to fight you again to cover your second fight for the PBC. Meaning that's like the same thing with the Errol Spence and the Terrence Crawford. We, I mean, we we don't need to see it again. And then Spence is already hurt with a with another well, eye injury. So well, that's different. That's different because we don't. We don't necessarily know how the fight's gonna play out between Jaime and Canelo. With Spence, it didn't really make sense because it's like Spence it, it was at 147. Up and he got fucked up in the fight. It wasn't even competitive. Canelo right. actually wants to fight with Jaime to be competitive and he wants to win that fight, of course. But if if Jaime is competitive and they have the rematch clause, he could do the same thing he did with Triple G. You know what I mean? Get a rematch. The Mexican fans are gonna be satisfied. But all of this was will mean that in September he will not be fighting David Benavides. And Canelo's team is the one that's pushing for a rematch, which makes really makes no sense. I mean, you, you know you're going to win, so unless unless he thinks Jaime is a bigger threat than everyone else thinks, I think that Jaime is a big threat. Jaime is like six foot tall, young, twenty seven years old, has over forty fights. Um, he, he was able to stop John Ryder, and Canelo's Canelo's power hasn't looked the same. Canelo wasn't able to stop Ryder. He wasn't even able to stop a Jamel Charlo jumping up two weight divisions. So the power isn't the same. The head movement isn't the same. The jab is still really, really good, but Canelo looks like he doesn't even, he's not even coming out there to box. He's just throwing big shots at this point. That's how Mike Tyson fought at the end of his career. Like Mike wasn't really jabbing much, wasn't really on his toes much, just trying to throw these big bolo shots. Hey, uh, this is a, a little off topic here, but do you think that a Shakur Stevenson will fight uh, on a July 6th? Fight who? I don't know. They haven't said the opponent. Ryan Garcia. <laughs> How they gonna fight Ryan Garcia? He's gonna get whooped by Haney. You might as well back let him get his day. ass whooped by Steven. Shit, back in the day. Back Damn, in the day, that mean he would have got whooped by Devin all and, three of the motherfuckers that came Ryan from Floyd. Fought Devin in April and then fucking around fought Shakur in July, like it, And that, exactly that means in a in a two year span he would have fought all three of the motherfuckers that came from Floyd made with the gym. Yeah, hey, bro, you Tank, think Devin Shakur, and to, uh, to fight at a one at a one forty seven to fight Marl Barros. Uh, hey, hey, KJ, I, I know I said that. Remember I told you Ryan was going to knock out Devin Haney? Yeah. I'm kind of on the fence now because Ryan Garcia is going fucking ballistic and his mind is not in the fight. And that is your strongest weapon is your mind and your IQ in the ring. And his shit is not there. That hey, fool is going crazy. Hey, did you see the um, tweet that he said? I mean, I don't think Ryan going crazy. He's just calling out people in the industry and stuff. But, uh, I don't think that's gonna have a difference on how the fight is gonna go. Literally, Ryan only had a puncher's chance from the from the get go. Repentant heart said, "Do you think Devin Haney, Tyson so, would be Logan Paul?" Ryan said this. Ryan said when he fought six times in the amateurs, the three times that he won, he rocked Haney, he hurt Haney. So that's his best chance. And Ryan's hook is nothing to be played with. Um, you can ask Tank about it. Like literally, that damn hook got a lot of steam on it. So Devin Haney punch resistance might be tested if Ryan is able to catch him. Outside of that, he he really doesn't have a, a boxer's chance in hell. He only has a puncher's chance. So it don't matter if he's calling out the industry, if his mind is there or if his mind isn't there. Um, he he really doesn't have that much of a chance to beat Devin Haney. Just a puncher's chance, that's it? Yeah, he yeah, has a puncher's has. chance. He has a real puncher's chance, too. I'm not just saying, it, like, Ryan's hook, the way he whips the hook, the amount of speed on it, the natural power he has, 
He's not going to be drained like the Tank Davis fight. He could knock Devin out. He could knock out most human beings on the planet with his hook. Especially just said in the same weight class. Well, in the same weight so class, he could knock out 90% of boxers with that hook. I mean, like I said, he finished Francisco Fonseca in one round. It took Tank like eight rounds to do that. And Tank landed a, an illegal shot in the back of the man's head. But Ryan, he has a lot of power in that hook. So Devin has to be on the watch. And Ryan is faster than Regis Progress. Devin just has to work on keeping the right hand up to block that shit, basically. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty now, using his feet, um, keep, yeah, keeping his hands high, keeping his rear hand high, probably ducking up under the, the hook and countering. Like, when Ryan throws the hook, try to counter to discourage him from throwing it. You Facts. Know? Or um or um take away his jab, take away his hand. I mean, I was gonna say Ryan doesn't really jab that that good anyway. He's yeah. Really... Ryan is an action fighter and he's a guy that's coming to land big shit. Like he he kind of still fights with an amateur type style. In the last fight though, he tried to really clean up Do his style. Show. You could see him like he was taking his time using footwork. So it's gonna be interesting to see what Ryan's gonna do. But he said in the interview with um Charlemagne that Devin is coming to box and he's coming to fight. And he also said that Devin could, can't hurt him. I might post those uh, later, but he said Devin is a boss. He doesn't have much power, and he can't hurt hey, him. He hey, you seen what Devin? That one forty. Go ahead. You, you seen what Devin um tweeted on earlier? No. He said he said Ryan gonna learn like Regis did. I mean, he might. Oh, you know, you, at the end of the day, oh, at the end of the day, Ryan said he was drained at one thirty five, but Devin was drained as well. So they're exactly. both gonna be hitting hard. They both are gonna be hitting hard in this fight. Hey, did you see the tweet that uh, Ryan said that he could find a, a Tupac's killer? <laughs> Bro. Man, Ryan, like, like I said, Bro. Ryan need to he need to let that shit go. I don't know if he's promoting the fight or if he's actually like just no, saying this shit. I mean, he Ryan just talking. Ryan, Ryan um, I don't know what he saw, but he thought that he was going to be a whistleblower or something, and it wasn't smart. It's like uh, you know what you get into when you get into certain industries and if you don't have the power to really stop all of it, what's the point of um, putting your life and everything in jeopardy? Like, <laughs> to me, it was just silly, but I don't think Ryan is going crazy just because he's exposing different things. Like, this is stuff that people have been talking about for years, like going back into the 80s and 70s. And, and before YouTube had all these restrictions, people used to make videos about this shit on YouTube religiously. You know, all those Illuminati videos and shit. So Ryan is just a famous person saying the same shit that regular people say every day. But we, since since Ryan is rich and has a lot of followers, more people are listening. You know, when a rich man speak it, the people listen. ONG uh see uh Nate Nate Diaz and uh Jorge Mas uh Jorge uh they're boxing. Oh, they're boxing each other? Yeah, Nate Nate Diaz and uh Jorge Masvidal. Nate, the one that fought Jake? Yeah. Damn. I mean, Nate probably going to... I don't know if Jorge uh, ever boxed before, so Nate might win just because... He looked pretty... He looked all right for an MMA fighter. He had a lot of stamina against Jake. It's just that he didn't turn his punches. Like, he was kind of like, you know, like... I don't know what to call that. Tap? I don't know. Honestly, at this fight between him and Tyson, if, if Tyson doesn't knock him out, it's rigged. Because yeah. he... He Yo, barely Tyson took punches. Is 57 years old. I'm making videos on this tonight, but Tyson is 57, man. It's 57. I, I, I know, I know, KJ, but you have to understand power never leaves you. All of your other attributes leave. They do. They do. Do you know, do you know why Mike wasn't really, uh, well, Mike started losing late in his career? Because Mike was losing speed because he, had, he hadn't really taken care of himself. Speed is power. Mike Tyson isn't George Foreman, he's an undersized heavyweight. He always has been. So a lot of his power came from speed, accuracy, like Tank Davis. Like if Tank slows down a step, his power isn't going to be the same. He's still going to be able to hit harder than most people, but the speed is a big part of his power. Whereas George Foreman could be 40 years old knocking people out because a lot of what George was doing was because of him having heavy hands and him being a big individual. George was like, what, 6'3", 6'4", um, 250. And he came back weighing even, you know, even more in, in his 40s. So... That's not Mike Tyson. That's Mike was a guy that relied off of actual boxing technique, hitting people with combination punches, hitting them right on the button, having a lot of speed. Speed is power. So I don't think Tyson got that same power like that, man. He's still more powerful than the average person, but Jake Paul has been actually boxing. Jake has been active. 
Mike has been, you know, smoking them trees, doing a radio show, eating. I think uh, which I just watched a video on TikTok. Um, Paulie Mal Malinaji said it best. Like Mike Tyson been enjoying life. And like, hasn't Errol oh, Spence done mushrooms as well? I don't know what what Errol was out there doing. A question, KJ. Mm -hmm. If Ryan Garcia loses to Devin Haney, who should he fight next? I mean, it don't matter. It's Ryan Garcia. He's going to sell regardless. It don't matter. I think that Ryan shouldn't even really be fighting Devin. If I was Ryan and I lose to Haney and it's embarrassing, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start fighting some lower tier dudes. I'm going to try to get like five or six fights, really work on whatever Derrick James is teaching me. Then I'm going to start calling out the big names again. But that's so weird because in boxing, it, does, it really doesn't work like that. Um, but you know what? Manny Pacquiao had a career resurgence, although people believe that he had some help. You know what I mean? Some um, some uh, medical, chemical help, allegedly. But in boxing, it really doesn't work like that where you get to the pinnacle and then you restart. It's kind of like you fight bums, then you fight semi-competition, then you fight contenders, then you fight the champion. So by the time you get to a championship position, by the time you get to a pay-per-view level, you're supposed to already be a polished fighter. Ryan isn't a polished fighter, but everybody watching him. So it's like, damn, what do I do? It would be weird for him to be like, guys, I'm not going to fight. I can't really beat Devin and Tank and Shakur right now, so give me three years to really work on my skill. And then in that time, he has to fight a bunch of people who could really, really hurt him, um, and they don't have a name for themselves, so that would hurt him. That would hurt Ryan's name, losing to a uh, uh, so-called nobody, you know, quote-unquote nobody. So I don't know. Ryan is in a very weird position. Fight like the the guy that mowed your lawn, and people are going to watch, though, right? Like, because he's that you, famous. You can fight who? fight the guy that mowed your lawn like anyone ryan garcia oh, and everyone's yeah, gonna yeah, fight okay, yeah ryan yeah. sell until he ryan could sell as long as he keeps winning like like say if devin Haney was to knock him out or he was to quit against devin that would hurt his pay-per-view sales but if it's competitive ryan can still sell man people think that ryan is gorgeous i'm talking about the women you know the consumers they think he looks good ryan has a complexion for the connection ryan is an action-packed fighter the biggest thing for Ryan's career would be if he were to knock out Devin Haney. If Ryan were to knock Devin Haney out, he would be a star in the sport again, just like how he was before the team fight. Now, right now, he's more of like, you know, the social media guy, and they're trying to build him as that, even though he's been boxing most of his life. But if he were to knock out Haney, motherfuckers would be talking about him like he's one of the best boxers in the world because they already like him as a person. They already like him as a um, personality, as an entertainer. They already like him as a social media guy. Somebody said you got the worst, worst takes on, bro. That's cool, Austin. I'm not going to block you for something. That's just an opinion. You haven't been around enough, Austin. My boy KJ knows what he's talking about. Trust right? me. I mean, it's just his opinion. I just don't like when people come up talking crazy stuff. My thing with Austin and people like that, if you say I have the worst takes, plural, that means you're watching multiple takes that I give. And if I have bad takes, what are you watching for? I don't watch people who I disagree with. I, I really don't. Like People always ask me about showbiz. Showbiz has been really successful as a boxing commentator and a uh, reactionist, if that's a thing. But I, I root for Showbiz to keep on getting more views and keep on making money. But I usually disagree with Showbiz takes, therefore I don't watch. So if you're saying that I had the worst takes, but you're steady watching, to me, that doesn't make sense. It's okay, Jay. If, if Ryan wins, will you that give him his props? What's up, Boxy? What's up, Boxy? If if Ryan wins, will you give him his props? No matter how I he wins. Ryan his props now. I, I made a video yesterday saying that people say that Ryan Garcia is a, a, a social media boxer, but how can that be so when he was in the same amateur tournaments with Devin Haney, Shakur Stevenson, and Tank Davis? Ryan Garcia is a, a 12 time amateur national champion, although his parents was the judges and shit, but still, I mean, the man had a successful and a lengthy amateur career. He has over 200 amateur fights. He's been boxing since he was a child. So for people to say that Ryan is a social media boxer don't really make sense to me. I mean, it, I'm more of a social media boxer than Ryan. I've only been boxing for a couple of years. Ryan really dedicated his life to the sport. They're just upset that he's not able to live up to the, his own hype. Like, for him to be so popular, he's not really amongst the elite. And that's what people are starting to say. Well, you're not a real boxer. Like, bro, how many people are going to be top 10 in the world at boxing? And Ryan's not top 10 in the world, but he's still top 20 or 30. That's still really good. But it's just the fact that he's he's famous, basically. They're like, nah, he ain't it, man. He a social media guy. 
And it's really him just doing like any work out of the four kings. I mean, he's giving us matchup out of the four kings. Like it's him, yeah. Tank, Sh Shakur, and Devin. Hey, make sure y'all. I don't know about I don't know about that four king shit, but make sure if y'all in here in the chat, make sure y'all tapping the screen. But that's a since you mentioned the four kings. Right? Since you mentioned the the four kings, uh, Ryan was called one of the four kings, but the skill level doesn't look like he's really you know a top tier dude. So that yeah, messed up the four it's... the four king thing. So yeah, but it's doctor. yeah, but we start to give him props for for, for being lit like one of the top guys to like still fight one of the top guys. I mean, he's the oh, only yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah, that's what I that's what I wanted to agree with. One thing that I'm gonna say, and I'm I might make a video later, but Ryan Garcia is uh is almost like a savior to boxing. Um, Floyd Mayweather advised him not to fight Devin Haney because he said Roley was a bigger money fight. But critically, Floyd know that Ryan could probably beat Roley, and even if he would lose to Roley, it would be a much more competitive fight. Devin probably going to smash Ryan. So it's not a good look for him to get smashed by Tank and then smashed by Devin. Pause. But but seriously, though, so if if Ryan is... Um, you no, know I'm saying if, if Ryan was being smarter and if he was playing along with the modern business of boxing, he would not be fighting Devin Haney right now. But shout out to Ryan for really putting on real fights. Uh, he Ryan's a real one. I don't world. care what and anybody he, says. And he's following up with a and two fights later, he's following up against Devin Haney, who's one of the best fighters in the world. This is what boxing fans claim they want. And Ryan is doing what everybody says they want you to do. So shout out to Ryan. Like nobody can take that away from shit. Canelo's will be the face of boxing. He's not jumping in the ring with David Benavidez. Ryan jumped in the ring with the best in the world. Back to back, damn near. Ryan could lose all of those fights and still make a big fight. Take yeah, yeah. And that's another reason he gets to do that because he's so popular. But still, I mean, you he's, still got to respect it because he don't have to fight Devin Haney. He didn't have to fight Tank. In fact, Ryan is the one who pressed Tank for the fight. I mean, Tank, he's the only um, one giving Tank did a lot. Like Tank with the rehydration clause and shit. Like Tank knew that Ryan was a dangerous fighter. That's why he put him under the claws for real. But Ryan pressed that's Tank why. for the fight. So shout out to him. Like most people are not calling each other out and really trying to make this shit happen. That's why, like, I, I F with Ryan, like, you know, on, on like, a, a fighter level. Granted, like, I will say, like, he's not, he's definitely not the top of, of uh, you know, yeah, the division, the and he's gonna, but, like, as far as, like, he is one of my favorite boxers, because time after time, he puts, he, he, he be putting on shows, bro, he be doing good, and he gives us fights that we want to see, whether or not he loses or not, that's up for debate. Very often. Yeah, it, fight, exactly. Fight. I mean, the man went out, when I watched the Tank Davis round fight last night, he really went after Tank until he got dropped in the second round. And then once he got his confidence back in the sixth and seventh round, he started going back after Tank again. But he started the fight out like, like fuck it. Like he, and he landed a big right hand in the second round. And then Tank ended up yeah, dropping because he got a little bit too eager. But I mean, Ryan's really the type of fighter that, like, I'll watch Ryan no matter how many loses, how many losses he gets. Because, like, Ryan's just, like, he's proven that he just wants the big fights. Granted, he's not that skillful, he's but exactly like... He's exactly what, what boxing needs. He's exactly, exactly what boxing And more fighters should be like that, but you have to understand something. Ryan can do that, and one vandal said it, because Ryan could still be marketable with those losses. Ryan has a complexion for the connection, so he's playing a different game. If Tank would have lost early in his career, it would have hurt him so much. Whereas Ryan lost early, and now he's about to deal against Devin Haney, and they're going to make a bunch of money. If he would have fought Willie Romero, they would have no. still made a bunch of money. So when you are a boxer and people find you to be attractive, you know, you look Caucasian, uh, shit like that, it makes a difference and it allows you leeway to to accept the loss better. The guy behind me, Canelo Alvarez, has lost twice officially and probably lost four times unofficially. Hella fights. Nobody really brings up those losses um, because they like Canelo and what he represents. He is a great fighter, but he has a complexion for the connection. He doesn't really look Mexican. He looks like, you know, any average... Bill or Jordan, like a white guy, a white guy that you would see in America. If, if you didn't, you know, know Canelo English um, for a long time, you would assume he did speak English. He looks American. The nickname, the nickname Canelo, is for like it, in like Spanish, basically means like white people, like white We're orange haired people. It, it means cinnamon. Yeah, yeah but you, it's, they're all white orange haired people. I know right. what it means, but like it's like it's white orange haired people. You hear me? Right, right. And like shit, you know. Yeah. No, but I think I think Tank could lose five fights and still be familiar. That's why. Ha oh, that, yeah. That's why like being undefeated one. doesn't mean anything in in a boxing. Really, I mean, people are trying to lose their O. That's why. I mean, Tank is another guy. That's why Bud was trying to go to one sixty eight and a fight Canelo. 
He was trying to lose his O after beating Errol Spence. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, Errol, I mean, uh, Terrence Crawford will fight Canelo and lose his O, but you got to understand, bro. If he fight Canelo Alvarez, that's going to be the biggest, biggest check of his, his life. So the O don't even matter. He could exactly. get knocked out. Like, bro, if he putting on for his family. One band who said something, I got to talk to him, bro. One band who said Tank could lose a fight and people will still watch him. That's true. Even though Tank is black, a loss for Tank would be very, wouldn't, wouldn't end his career, just like Mike Tyson, because people are still going to come for the knockout ability. When you can knock people out, that puts you on a whole different level as far as marketability. So boxers, they have to try to remain undefeated for as long as possible. But a knockout artist, Tank had three, four, five losses. You know that he still could potentially knock somebody lights out, and you're going to pay a ticket to see that. Hell yeah! It's like the fight with uh, Wilder, just like the fight with Wilder Chicago and Joseph like Parker. Right. Man. You know, just like the fight with Tank uh, is also Wilder. another fighter. I don't no, care. I don't care if he loses. I'm paying. Hell no. Why are Benavidez and Tank in the same car? What do you mean? Why are they in the same car? They both action packed fighters, especially Benavidez. Benavidez is more action packed than Tank. Like Benavidez actually comes forward for most of the fight. Tank he boxes in all directions. Like he he'll go forward, he'll go backward, he'll use his feet. But if he does for most of the fight, he's coming forward, he's hunting. So and he don't really even get the credit for that. But Canelo know that. That's why Canelo like, man, I ain't I ain't fucking with this man, man. If Pitbull fights Tank again, what happens, KJ? If they fight again at one forty, which I think they will be doing, because I think Pitbull's gonna beat Roley, become a champion, and Tank is gonna rematch him at one forty for the belt. Uh. T Tank is either going to win or he's going to get the knockout. That's it. Pitbull pretty much, I'm not going to say he don't got no chance, but the way that Tank can fight, the way that Tank can box on a move, he literally could just give Pitbull a boxing lesson. Um, the only chance that Pitbull got to win in, I think, is if Tank tries to force a knockout and gets a little reckless. But I just don't see Pitbull being able to beat Tank. Pitbull kind of fight with the same style, and Tank already dismantled that style with one arm. So if Tank has two arms and it's the same style that he's going up against, Pitbull is not outpointed. KJ, how many fights has Pitbull had since uh, the Tank fight? Has it been two or three? I know one was Gamboa and then Cabrera, and then I think there's one other it's guy. Been two. It's been two. He fought the Keanu, Keanu Reeves-looking guy, and he fought Gamboa. Yeah, and like in those two fights, bro fought the exact same way. That's his style. That's his style. I mean, that's that style is not a – even though I'm saying like, okay, Pitbull may be one-dimensional, but that dimension is, is a tough dimension. Like, that's just not easy. He gave Tank a lot of problems. He hurt Tank in the fight to the body. Um, he's not going to beat. I mean, he's going to lose to people because when you fight in the same exact way, there's going to be someone who can make an adjustment. You're going to lose. But most people will lose to Pitbull Crew because of his aggression, the amount of punches he throws, the body attack, and the power. So that's not just an easy style that you could just walk over. Tank is one of the best fighters in the world. People forget that. So Pitbull lost on one of the, the top of the line. It doesn't really get that much better than Tank. Tank is at least top five in his weight class. But Pitbull, he would beat most people in that weight class in the world with that style. So, but if he were to change some shit up, yeah, he would have a better chance. If he had naturally faster feet, he probably would have beat him. That's the difference between like the Hispanic fighters. Um, Roberto Duran, he's he's from Panama and shit, but Roberto had the same toughness and grit and the same aggression, but he had feet like a black man. He had fast feet. That's what really allowed him to to beat all time great fighters like like a Sugar Ray Leonard. Somebody like Pitbull Cruz, he wouldn't be able to do shit with Sugar Ray because of the he only could fight in that that one style, that one direction. Roberto was versatile; he had different styles, and he had different feet, so he could do different angles. He could jump in and out. He could do the same shit that a lot of the, you know the black fighters typically do. And it's not just black fighters, but you know Loma, Loma and Usyk, they have pretty good footwork. Durant quit because the motherfucker spent three months it was a lot like, of losing uh, weight. Yeah, Durant was out of K KJ, yeah. did you see what Eduardo Gonzalez just wrote? No. Snicker wrote, man, David should fight Edgar Berlanga. Like, what? Damn, you, no, you know, Berlanga he killed. Berlanga would get murdered, bro. That's murder. The fuck That's like putting about? John Ryder up against uh, Better Beef almost. Wait, is Edgar Edgar Berlanga, isn't Berlanga in their, uh, huh. their, their weight division? Yeah, he in like 168. So he should fight him. He should fight him. But he would get That's bombed. murder, KJ. Listen, Berlanga bit his opponent in like his last two fights. Because he, he couldn't because he was losing. 
Berlinga out here biting he, people, man. Yeah, he bro, just got bro, a knockout. Yes, but the yeah, no, is, no. I, my, I didn't finish my point. This was like he was like what on like a six, seven streak knockout, and then he started stepping up competition, and then they all went away. <laughs> all the knockouts went away. It's hard to knock out tough um, fighters who look. When you first start your career, they have you fighting people who are part time boxers. They have you fighting people who who work two jobs and shit. So like Schofield who, almost. Who can't even do a full training camp, so you're knocking them out. But when you start fighting guys who it's their job to box, it gets harder to knock guys out. So shout out to the guys who can still get it done, like Tank, Arthur Berta Bias, Abril Matias, uh, Virgil Ortiz Jr., uh, Joe Joyce, fucking um, Benavides. You know what I mean? Like Dude, shout out to these guys. Hard to Joseph knock Parker, out. bro. I'm loving his 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 whole arc now, man. The it's comeback? crazy. Yeah, he's coming. Yeah. Back. Andrew got paid to tell Duran about the fight. What are you talking about, Boxy? No, nah, I was yeah, referencing about Duran and Yeah, Duran got Duran got like his uh, his manager got paid to like not tell him about the fight until you know what I'm saying? Like no, it was it was a full setup. Paid, the manager Duran had to get in shape. The manager Durant got paid to force the fight that had to happen immediately, basically. Like not give Duran enough time to get ready for the rematch because Leonard was like, "Look, I pay you." I will pay you directly if we have this fight at this time. So that was some, some shady shit, but if Duran would have stayed in shape, who knows what would have happened in a rematch. I think Duran would have still lost because Sugar Ray changes his entire With a lot game of promoters, game. man. I mean, at the end of the day, if Sugar Ray would have fought how he usually fights, you know, using footwork, he would have beat Duran in the first fight. So those make fights because you got to look at Thomas Hearns knocked out Duran, and then, you know, Marvin Hagler knocked out Thomas Hearns, and Marvin Hagler couldn't knock out Duran. Yeah, they went for so, that was crazy. So, see, see, styles make fun. Styles always make fun. It's just oh. that people, they forget that. And sometimes I forget that when I'm making a prediction. But styles always yeah. make fun. Eduardo. How are we feeling about Zoo versus Thurman? I think Zoo gets a knockout. No, nah, I think uh, Thurman going to be too quick. Knockout Keith Thurman. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to build my parlay, guys. Let me know. Thurman going to be too quick, bro. Like, That's what I'm thinking, that too. Thurman came off the couch and was able to beat Barrios. <laughs> Zoo power, yeah, but power nah, I, don't know. I mean, Zoo kind of slow. That's why I think Crawford, you know, Crawford won to fight Zoo, but Crawford about to fight them uh, Eubanks. I'm going to have to do a live about that tomorrow. Did Eubanks come off of a, a knockout loss before his last, before he, the, he won? You know what I'm saying? Like, I know he, he won. He, he rematched us. Oh, we major dumb. But even look everybody in the face and say, "Oh, I'm not gonna fight Boots, but I'm gonna fight this dude." And that that is crazy. I mean, Crawford Eubanks is isn't even that crazy, much bigger of a fighter. I mean, you're talking about Chris Eubanks. Chris Eubanks, people. He, you're talking about the UK market. You're talking about an entire a man who people from England and fucking. Yeah. Uh, he sold out a fight with Liam Smith. Yeah, he used to watch boxing, man. Boxing used to be big so in the we, UK. Hey, boxing, so boxing is bigger in the UK than in America. Hey, I got a question. That's why he wants to fight Chris Eubanks. I got a question. So, you you think the boxing world gonna get Crawford the same energy for ducking boots and moving up and wait to fight a bum? Uh, well, that was oh, Chris Eubanks well, that's that's because Boots listen, never listen. offered Crawford up, anything. Oh, here we go. So Boots never. You offered could him. say hold that. Up, hold up. Let me answer the question. We not gonna give him the same energy. Now listen, Chris Eubanks isn't a bum. He's just not top tier but he's still i would say he's probably top 20 in the division um second terrence crawford is 36 years old and and he wasn't a a big name until the errol spence fight like he wasn't going to all these radio and tv shows until he was 36 years old it's not his fault that he was with top rank and they didn't know how to promote him he's at the end of his career now he's focused on making as much money as possible fighting boost would be like literally fighting somebody off the street when you want to talk about pay-per-view sales boost is not a um a big name. Somebody says you're so biased, bro. No, I'm not biased. David Benavides and Canelo is the biggest fight in boxing. Canelo might sell 1.5 million pay-per-view buys against David Benavides. He can't do that with no one else when you look at it. The, the third fight with Triple G, it didn't do a million uh, pay-per-views. It didn't even do 700,000. The fight with Canelo totally did 700K. But I mean, uh, the, the one with Plant didn't do a million views. So if Canelo wants to do a million views, 
one last time before he steps out of box and he needs David Benavidez. The people have spoken. The public has spoken. Box. If, if um, uh, Crawford wants to even get a big check, he needs to fight somebody like Chris Eubanks because he has an entire European market behind him. Chris Eubanks, that is. Nobody boots. No one is behind boots. Y'all aren't buying boots shit. Y'all are saying Crawford needs to fight boots, but when boots does a pay-per-view, y'all don't buy it. So y'all aren't as big fans of boots as y'all claim to be. Shit, it's I'll like y'all want trash fights. Has Boots ever been on pay-per-view, though? Want like good fights, y'all don't yeah, buy Yeah, Boots been on pay-per-view. Against Spence. No. Against, against Spence. Oh, you mean the... talking about Crawford. He said Boots. Boots been on pay-per-view against uh oh. the damn um Via. Was that a headliner, or was that just like one of those uh, showtime That was events? just a normal no. fight night. He, hit, he headlined against uh Via, didn't he? Via. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, a yeah. fight night though, like a free one. You had, you just had to have the subscription. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was, it was no, like a the zone wait, fight. Wait, wait. You still had to have the, only the service. Only time Boots was on pay per view then is the Tank Davis um, fight then against Karen. But I mean, I, I, I don't like how people fucking they discredit some of uh, Boots's wins. Like that Via win was solid, bro. Via, is Via a, was a killer. Off, Via is a great fighter. Like people forget Boots and um. Uh, Rashidi Ellis, they were they were talking about fighting each other. Exactly. So Rashidi, they and they both fucked up that night too because they both was was focused on each other and they they both had one of the worst performances. Yeah, in the press conference, I, I remember. remember that shit. I, I was like, damn, they was thinking about each other instead of focusing on their man. Yeah, Boots and it's overlooked that dude. Turn, and Rashidi Ellis got knocked down like like two times and he ended up losing the, the second half of the fight because really he was dominant until he started getting tired. But people forget via. He beat Rashidi Ellis, who was actually supposed to be a potential opponent for Boots. So Via wasn't no uh, somebody that you could just walk over. He wasn't a running yeah, mill fighter. Was good, he was a bro. very competitive, uh, hard hitting, very game fighter. And Boots just dismantled him. So it just show you that Boots really is on that on another level. And Rashidi Ellis was supposed to be competitive for Boots. Via was able to um, uh, beat Rashidi, especially in the later second half of the fight. He really he really poured it on. So it oh, just yeah. showed you like Boots on a different level, man. And Via was a real opponent. He wasn't nobody exactly. that you could be like. Oh. Hey, hey, what, See, that's what, why I like what, these lies, man. KJ what, knows. What, what you think about the Canelo Munguia fight? You think it's a, a good that's fight? That's a real or... fight. I mean, it's a dangerous that's fight. That's a good fight. I mean, I not a dumb fight, fight, but it's a good fight. Canelo noted it's, a, it's, it's two things. Canelo noted it's dangerous because he put a rematch clause in there, even though he didn't do a rehydration clause. But he understands that if he loses, he has a chance to fight him I... back. But also, he put a rematch clause in there so he could avoid this guy because... He wants to do another Triple G thing where he fights um, Mungia. Most likely, he's going to get a decision even if Mungia wins. Then he can rematch Mungia and beat him even more convincingly, just like he did with Triple G. But if we know that it's a rematch clause, then that means in September, he'll be fighting Mungia again. He will never fight David Benavidez in 2024. So that's really what this fight is about. This fight is about giving the fans something that's, you know, that's to please them, that can satisfy them. But really, everybody wants wants the cake. Everybody yeah, wants I, to have their cake I, and you too. You yeah, want, that, you want that's, to see David that's, that's what, what I see. That, that that's what I I, I kind of like looked at this fight and I'm like, this kind of gonna be like the Canelo GGG fight. Yeah, it's gonna be a toe to toe fight. Yep, that's what I see it being. I like that fight because it's gonna be good to see how Canelo reacts with somebody who's gonna be yeah, throwing Mugia punches from start to finish. Out. And then the thing about it is too that Jaime Mugia looked John Ryder looked like an amateur, and then Canelo. Knocked him down one time and no, like the sixth round and twice. couldn't even finish. He like, knocked him down twice, but yeah. And, the only Mugia, no. listen, listen, Mugia is bigger than Canelo and he's bigger than John Ryder. Um, number one, number two, uh, Mugia is younger. When Canelo knocked down Ryder, he's getting older. He couldn't push the pace. But John Ryder isn't a top ten guy, even though they might rank him as that. He's really not. He's not. He couldn't. He never had no chance against Canelo, and he, he really didn't have a chance against Jaime. So. Making him look bad isn't necessarily impressive per se. Uh, John Wright is a, a tough guy with muscles. You know what I mean? But Pretty I watched much. the fight. He was doing his nice little move, like where he was uh, um, in the opposite stance than Jaime, and he was uh, countering Jaime's jab by throwing his jab under Jaime's jab and stepping to the side. That was that was tight. But other than that, he's not really a guy with a deep boxing bag. Not to knock on him, but he's a guy with a lot of muscles, with a, a mean demeanor. But he he's never was gonna be somebody that could beat Canelo or Hamid. This dude said and David couldn't hurt plan. What you mean by that? 
Yeah, David could have hurt Plant because all Plant was doing was hugging in that fight, and he was. Plus, going... it was the biggest. Ring David was fighting the ref too. The ring was yeah. the ref allowed when, when him to hug him, fought, him more, but the ring when was twenty two feet. Benavides, he it was, was a special size hugging. ring. He had to get um he had to get permission from the Nevada State Athletic Commission just to have a big uh twenty two foot ring. So David knew that he was going to have a track meet. I mean, not David. Caleb knew that he was going to have a track meet with Benavides. Yeah, and then when he fought when he fought Canelo, he was he wasn't doing all that hugging so. Yeah, actually, yeah. he was outboxing Canelo for the first half of the fight. Usually, Caleb Plant outboxes the opponents for the first four rounds. He just be getting tired. He's not yeah, durable. So he... He don't got no power. He got power. I mean, he's not. No, he's just not a knockout artist. Like he, he tried to fight like Floyd and shit. But I just, fight like I, Floyd, I, I, I hate how the it casuals... takes a lot of stamina. It takes a lot of stamina. I hate how the casuals always compare fights, like. Oh, if he stopped this dude, how come he didn't stop him? Like, bro, Styles Boxing. make fights, bro. I think you got. I think you Styles make fights, but you still got to compare fights because you I can't really compare fights, though, bro. Insight like, of what's gonna happen? But Styles make fights. Plant Plant fought a whole different fight when he fought Canelo than he did with Benavidez. And, I know and he fought the same. He fought the same, in my opinion. And early on, nah, he came on strong. He, he threw a lot of combinations, punched and moved. But Towards he got the second tired. half of the fight, tired. he was still boxing with Canelo. And the, and then the second of the fight, the, towards the second half of the fight with Benavidez, all he was doing was just hanging in there, hugging. Yeah, he, I mean, Benavidez. He was hugging the hell out Benavidez. Benavidez was a bigger man. And uh, Benavidez was able to do shit to plant that Canelo wasn't. Canelo's shorter than plant. So Canelo has to put forth more effort just to land a shot. And whereas Benavidez is, is bigger than Plant, taller and a larger man, so he just got to let his hands go. So that's a totally different, uh, totally different monster. But Caleb, he tried to, he tried to fight. If Caleb Plant had a better inside game, I think it would have been a better fight. But Caleb, he only really had a was, strong inside game. I think Caleb uh, needed to Plant go down got caught with something in like round five or six that like changed the tempo for him, and like he just never recovered. Yeah, they. I, with a nice body shot, and he planned on hitting Andre with that same body shot. But yeah, David, he'll land a, a body shot, but it'll slow him down. His raps, because he's just going to start using that and punching on him, wearing him down, shit like that. So that's what's going to happen to Canelo. The same shit that happened to Plant and Andre, that's what's going to happen to Canelo. Hey, I, I, I wonder I wonder who Benavidez is going to fight next. Who would be a good uh, fight? He's fighting, he's fighting up somebody in light heavyweight. A light heavyweight. Yeah, and, and he's somebody he's, that uh, Reynoso he, trains. He, he should have fight is going to get the chance to fight against the winner of um, Berta B and Pivol. So Benavidez is already he moved past Canelo. Yeah, that, for this that, that 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 that'll be a smart that's a, that, that's a smart move for Benavidez. Go up yeah, there. Yeah, while try sitting to, around waiting on a guy that don't want to fight you. Try to go up there and collect them bills yeah. and, and facts don't want to end up. And Benavidez deserves it. He could fight whoever he wants. He's been kicking everyone's yeah, ass at 168. Man, so, he, he big. That's you know a mean? big so, boy. Nah, I really fuck with David. He's not letting he that whole Canelo thing hold his career up. He, he, and that, he'll, he'll fit perfect in, in light heavyweight. He'll be good. And he over isn't I don't know. Like, Shit, I, don't I don't know. I think he's got enough like, dog I mean, in him to go to heavy. But I want to see how he how he changes his style because I don't think he'll be able to just sit what? there Heck and no. absorb all of those shots at light heavyweight. Like, them motherfuckers punching. They athletic. Um, it's crazy, man. You think Benavidez can go to heavyweight? That's insane. That no, he hell, that no. Dog in him, bro. I didn't say he'd be successful. No, the only way he could go to heavyweight is if he start juicing. But he could go to cruiserweight, though. He could finish his career at cruiserweight in his 30s. But right now, the heavyweights, no. Nah, hell. Like, know, you I saw what cool. Joshua did to Ngannou. I don't know. Like, the heavyweights are they too big? They bang. Heavyweights aren't just heavyweights. These are the biggest anymore. and most most. They super players. heavyweights up there. These are some of the most athletic heavyweights. When we talk about raw power, a lot of the footwork is gone. Back in the sixties and seventies, they can move better. But raw power and and size, height and shit like that. These are some big motherfuckers. Like they 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 need to start thinking about having a super heavyweight division because these motherfuckers boy. Super heavyweight. It's, That's what it's, I'm especially like huge. big big There's baby no Miller way. fighting a hundred pounds. Big baby heavier. Miller. I was about to say that. Yeah, baby Biller weighing over a hundred pounds heavier than a uh, Daniel Dubois. And he still didn't win though. That's what's crazy, man. Yeah, but he he still had the stamina to go almost like twelve rounds. Though. Yeah, baby Miller was in better shape. He would have won that fight. He he was actually a better mover than Daniel Dubois. Like he was doing he, good for the first two rounds. Yeah. Oh yeah. Getting Zhang weighed two eighty in the fight last week. Who? 
Zhang that fought uh, Joseph Park. Are oh, you talking about the Chinese one? Yeah. Zhang? I don't know. Hey, Zhang is calm, motherfucker. I don't yeah, know. He weighs like 280. But back to my point about uh, uh, Plant. Plant doesn't have the power to stop people from walking him down at 168. Like, his his boss game is beautiful. He's, like, one of my favorite boxers to watch. But he just simply doesn't have the power to keep people off of him. Yeah. And well, I mean, I think if he had an inside game, it would be better because then he wouldn't have to move for 12 rounds. That's just tiring. You're a super middleweight. Does anybody want to come down because left lane want to come up? He was taking yeah, Benavidez. I mean, uh, who ain't Benavidez talking. and Canelo was taking his power like it was nothing. But then when they hit him, it was busting them all up, especially in the uh, Benavidez fight. It was insane. Yeah, hey, I'll okay. do the honors. Did you hear what Floyd Mayweather said? Crawford and uh, Benavidez should fought each other. They want to fight Canelo. Say, you Ernest Crawford? Oh. Yeah, that's what Floyd Mayweather said. He said he. I didn't hear that. God, what up, that's KJ? What I, I think that's. I didn't, I didn't hear that, man. How you been, brother? I've been telling Floyd you. just protecting Canelo for real because he, you know, I'm at the end of the man. day, he's a PBC executive. Oh, KJ, I have a question. And I guess this goes for the same thing of all of you. Are any of you Tommy Fury fans? I'm just wondering. Who? Who? No. Are any of Did you, you Tommy, Tommy Fury? Tommy Fury? Fury? Bro. Yeah. Shit. Oh, no. I mean, Jake Paul, bro. He, he shot really it. Bad. He was yeah, but shit he, in his last fight. He was, but he beat Jake Paul. He did every. He did what we all wanted to get kicked that fool's ass. He made him no, realize. I wanted to knock out. I don't, yeah, I don't really watch ass. Jake Paul listen, fights. Listen, listen. Tommy Fury been boxing his whole life. He's had access to top world class trainers at least since he was a teenager. His brother is Tyson fucking Fury. Jake Paul literally started boxing a couple years ago. Tommy Fury's supposed to demolish that man. Like yeah, it was he beat fight. him, but that shit wasn't even convincing. And it seemed like Tommy Fury was pulling back his punches, so maybe he signed a contract where he's like you can't really hurt him. So I, I can't really rank on him too much, but he didn't really do his job in that fight when you consider the experience. Like he's supposed to really whoop Jake ass. You're not imagine if uh hey Wickedy, how much do you weigh, man? Wickedy. I weigh? Yeah, how much you weigh, man? Um I'm well last time I checked well, was a couple months ago, I was one ninety. Okay, one I, I could make more now. So imagine if, let's say you was fucking one forty, one thirty five is right. Let's say you was around there. If you was to come off the street and start boxing, and then they'd be like, all right, we're going we gonna to match you up with Loma Tinko. So Loma been boxing since he was like five and six. You're supposed to get your ass whooped. You're not really supposed to be competitive. So the Tommy Ferry fight, that wasn't really Tommy making a statement. Like, Jake, Jake hasn't even been boxing that long. Tommy really supposed to fuck him up. Tommy grew up around boxing. His brother is great. Um, and he's had top tier coaching. So he's supposed to really dominate. Somebody said, do you think Canelo is overrated? No. Canelo is one of the best to ever do it. I mean, unless you factor in the clenbuterol and, you know, other substances that he might have been taking. But no, Canelo is like that when you just look at the results and the skill level and shit. But at the end of the day, he doesn't want no smoke with David. Hey, I was watching Andre Ward on The Breakfast Club, and, uh, man, he was really criticizing Canelo's uh, record, man. Andre as far as ducking. Salty here lately. Andre should have fought Canelo though. Like, Andre shit. retired at 34. He could have fought Canelo. So I don't get that. I don't I get believe that. he yeah, could have beat facts. Canelo, man. How old is Andre now? Canelo was never. He, still, he can still low key fight him. No, nah, I don't know. Yeah, he'll fight him now. Nah, 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 bro. Now it would be too late. I wouldn't even want to see that. But he should have fought Canelo when he was 34, like after the Kovalev fight. Yeah. Canelo wouldn't have took that. No, Canelo probably would have took it. That would have took it. Crazy. I don't know why. Like Andre, Andre fought fucking Kovalev. Didn't even really get no credit for it because it's like, bro, it's Kovalev, and you know they went back and forth. But if he would have just fought Canelo and beat Canelo, it would have been worth him fighting Kovalev three times. Yeah. So I don't know why he didn't try to make a fight with Canelo. Maybe Canelo ducked him or what? I'm gonna look into that. Like, why the fuck Canelo and Andre ain't fought? Well, Andre said well, in a couple I, I, of interviews it was because Canelo really never spoke his name like that. Man, fuck that. That's dumb. He could have made all type of money. 
Um, yeah, he, he was talking about it on the Breakfast Club. He said they never really crossed paths or, you know, they never called man, each other out. Andre was tripping. But, you see, uh, Floyd, Floyd was waiting. Huh? Floyd was but, supposed to fight Canelo when Canelo was 21. Floyd already saw the writing on the wall. Like, man, no way. That's a big money fight. Floyd and Canelo, um, that <laughs> interview they did 2.2 million. So he should have looked at what Floyd did and was like, yo, this is a big money fight. I want Canelo. So I don't know. I don't know. Andre, maybe he wasn't thinking about the money. I mean, Boo Boo fought Benavides for for more money. What Canelo was offering David. Yeah. So. Somebody says you guys want Canelo to fight Benavides. What about Bud versus Boo? Stop the excuses. No, oh, that's a cool. Well, I want Boo's both to make an offer. No, Boo needs to make hold an up. offer. Hold up. I wanted to see that. Canelo and Benavides will be the biggest fight in Mexican history. So he's gonna move on the other um, side. Just wait for him to be done. Hold up. Canelo and Benavidez will be the biggest fight in Mexican history. Number one. And number two, it's gonna do pay-per-view numbers. Canelo might be actually be able to get a million pay-per-view buys, which he hasn't done in years. Booth and Bud, I'll be shocked if they got five hundred thousand pay-per-view buys. Like, is it y'all what are you talking about? Like we talking about money, bro. Bud, thirty six years old, he's trying to get paid. But we already know the man could fight. You know that he probably could beat Boots or he probably could lose to Boots, but he only has two or three fights left in him. So why wouldn't he, why would he skip out on a chance to get paid? Canelo's skipping out on fucking a hundred million dollars. By not fighting Benavidez, a chance for him to break a million pay-per-view buys for the first time in years, he's skipping out on multi-millions, bro. Like that's a duck, but well, that's crazy. Who the I'd have been yeah, he, he, he definitely is ducking Benavidez. I would have been he is ducking, bro. Unless he thinks something crazy is going to happen. Like maybe he feels like he's going to get knocked out. That's what I think. He thinks he don't want to get knocked out. Hey, for all of I the mean, chat. Benavidez is hey. a white bully. Uh, probably I think, only two or three. I think hey, they hey, both. Hey, There's probably only two or you, three hey. fights that, that so, Bob can make. Hey, for here, here, hey. Money. He if he Canelo would have been man. smarter, why would he decline over $60 million and get a 92 out of 8% bag if David, if Canelo was really like that. He would have accepted the ninety-two yeah. to eight percent back. Canelo paid Bibble more. Canelo and Bibble was an eighty-eight twelve split. He paid <laughs> Bibble more to fight him. He was going to yeah. pay Benavidez less. Benavidez accepted it, and Canelo's team didn't get back to him because they were trying to duck him the whole time. They thought Benavidez was going to be a prima donna, like like um, how how Shakur was with Devin. Benavidez said, "No, I'll fight you for pennies." Benavidez said, "I would just I just want the platform. I just want to whoop your ass in front of all them people." Because in the long run, I'm going to make more money if I have you on my resume. In the long run, my legacy is going to be greater if I have you on, on my resume. So Benavides actually did that, and Canelo still didn't want to fight him. So, I mean, I, don't, I really don't know what, what to say. I don't know how they – in Mexico, though, I heard a lot of Mexicans come up here and say that they, they thrashing Canelo about this. On Twitter, a lot of Mexicans give him flat. So it's people up here that's like, you know, we hating on Canelo, but it's also a big Mexican fan base that's saying that Canelo is ducking. So – Hey, this Mexico one, is at odds right now. Hey, the, hey, this one's for all, all the people in the in the chat for all for all about boots. Why would Canelo? No, no. Why would Crawford before fighting Errol Spence not talk about Canelo, saying it would have been a trash fight? There's no, there's no reason for me to fight. But after he got the two time undisputed, the first ever, why would he try to cash out his name before he retires at 36 years old, undefeated? Why would he try to fight Canelo at 36 years old? And go up to 168. He's trying money. to cash out his name. He's not trying to fight boots. Yeah, money. He's all I trying I to get people I'll severely I'll underestimate I'll the popularity I'll that the boots versus Bud fight has. Yeah. I will agree that Bud, I mean, uh, boots never had popularity before, before the Spence versus uh, Bud fight. But I think just from that fight, that is enough to garner people to. I think the fight will sell. Is what I'm saying. No, not I like not like a million, but I think it's due like 150, 200k. Like it, it, people want to see. Boots. Listen, Boxy Dragon, one fifty and two hundred k. Like Bud is a star. Yes, yeah, I'm not. saying like no, it's not, bro. That's not, not selling. One fifty and Terrence Terrence Crawford is on his last couple of uh, fights. Terrence Crawford wasn't a star. Like one Vandal said, Terrence Crawford wasn't a star. Boots damn sure not a star. So Terrence just tasted real money. He wants to taste real money until he retires. That's usually how boxing goes. Once you make it to the pinnacle, you're supposed to keep on getting good paydays. Why the fuck would he take two steps backward after taking three steps forward? Thank you, sir. I think uh, I think Crawford just daring to be great. 
to want to fight Canelo because he's no, he know Floyd did it and beat Canelo. Russell just fuck around and beat Canelo. So, he got a chance. It's a 60-40 fight. I think, I think, that, I think he's but, just daring to be great. My thing is this. Canelo gave Jermel Charlo a chance at him, but then said no to Bud. That lets you know something. Canelo gave him a kind of chance, bro. I got to say this, bro. I got to say this. Um, Canelo said that he knew that Terrence was going to beat Arrow. He said, I knew. I knew. Because Canelo can assess skill level because Canelo is of the higher skill levels. So he said he knew that Terrence was going to beat Arrow. He gave Charlo a chance to fight him. And he didn't care that Charlo was jumping up and weight. But then when Bud called him out, he said, well, no, I'm not going to get no credit. He coming up and weight, blah, blah, blah. So Canelo know that that's Bud will have a real chance of beating him, bro. Whether he won it. Don't, don't forget. Not. Don't forget about the Miracon fight, bro. He gave Miracon a chance, too. Yeah. See? But that's a 60 40 fight, in my opinion. Canelo 60, Bud 40%. But that's, Bud, I mean, Canelo could potentially get knocked out. Crawford is special like that. But, bro, I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. I got stuff to do, place to be, people to see. Steven's World, Left Lane, One Vandal. Thank you for coming up on the live, man. Uh, we had a good live. Yep. We yep. had a lot of ideas. Yep. Um, Y'all have a good evening, man. Y'all too. All right, man. Well, yep, too yep. Man. See you next time, bro. That's it.